Hello, it is Tuesday the 25th of January and tonight is Burns night. It's about, well it is, 20 to 5 now. It's just getting dark and I've just noticed, so I cleaned the living room so it was all lovely, lit the fire. I've even got a cat that's not our cat sitting beside me. It's all very lovely and then Phoebe came home from her after school club and has dumped her school bag right there. <laughs> and there she is. <laughs> She's gonna, are you going to have a snack and then get changed? I'm going to get changed and then come back down to my snack. Okay. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so I thought I'd film a little vlog about Burns Night because it's a Scottish celebration and uh, I wasn't <laughs> born in Scotland, I was born in England, but uh, both my parents are Scottish, or rather my dad was Scottish. He passed away a couple of years ago. Um, my mum is Scottish. She was born in Fife, grew up in Fife and Aberdeen, and now lives here in Kent. They moved down to Kent in the 1970s. Anyway, my mum's on her way over as I speak. We've got haggis in the fridge. Um, we love vegetarian haggis, which is basically made with oats and onion and pearl barley. Um, and so on. It's really, really delicious. I do have a normal haggis as well because Lilia prefers a normal haggis which is made with lamb. It's basically like a sausage with meat and oats and barley. Um, so we've got those which we will cook in the oven. Uh, they're relatively easy to get down here now. We usually get ours in Sainsbury's or Aldi's and this year we got ours from Aldi's. We're going to make some shortbread because the girls made some at their guides and rangers last night, took them home to cook, the, cook it and I burnt it to a crisp. <laughs> I don't know how I managed it but the whole house smelt of burnt shortbread for a good couple of hours. Um, so we're going to make some proper shortbread 
Uh, we're going to have a little whiskey later. And my mum is bringing her burn. I don't know why she's bringing her book of Burns poetry because I've got it, but she's bringing hers and she's going to read a little bit um, of his poem out for us later. I'm sure she'll let me film her doing it. Uh, and just in case you're not aware, Burns Night is when uh, we, traditionally in Scotland uh, they have haggis and celebrate the birthday of the Scottish, famous Scottish poet, Robbie Burns. Hello cat that doesn't live here. Are you going to go home? because you don't live here? Or are you staying because you want to celebrate Burns's birthday? Anyway, we're gonna make my uncle's shortbread recipe that he uh, gave to me a few years ago. So I'll show you how we make it. Shortbread's so simple and so delicious and so quick. I've been at my so-called smash book again. I was tidying up some of the Christmas cards and letters and things I got and putting them away um, from over the last couple of months. And I also found a couple of bits. And I just started making a little page with uh, stamps from around the world. I've got just the US and Japan at the moment. And I've just been sticking them in. I just did that primer stuff again, that gesso. And then I went over with that the gouache with a bit of water, but I'm still getting the hang of that, so I need to work on that. And this obviously isn't watercolour paper. But the idea was just to give a bit of a background colour, um, and it's not supposed to be any good, because I'm going to be sticking stuff all over it, and I'm going to do some drawing over it as well. Um, and just having some fun and getting a feel for things and having no idea what I'm doing, basically. I need to get a better more precise glue than Pritt stick. I'm getting a bit of a mess with Pritt stick. I've also used some glittery washi tape stuff, which isn't very sticky, so I might have to stick that down a bit more. And I've stuck a little quote that I'd cut out of the Happy newspaper ages ago. So those are my little post stamps that I've been collecting from America, and I've got some Japanese stamps up here. That was on a letter and some bits that my friend Vicky sent me. Hi, Vicky. <laughs> And then this little Rossum male dragon, that was on a parcel of yarn, yarn that I ordered from one of my favourite yarn dyers. And I just loved that, so I saved it. And then I've got another um, postmark up here. I've got the Par Avion um, stickers from America and from Japan. And I'm going to add to this as and when I get more stamps, basically. I just want to cover the page in stamps and some drawing. And I don't know if I'll write anything yet, but I've just made a start and it was fun. It only took 10 minutes. Oh, and I've also got this little um, Happy New Year card from uh, lovely Christy. Sent me a, um, a Happy Lunar New Year card all the way from Japan where she lives. And uh, I'm going to stick that in. I'm going to make a little flap out of it as well here. But I want to get some nicer washi tape um, to use to do that. Obviously it'll be the right way up. <laughs> about quarter to eight quite late because Dan's got an inconvenient Zoom meeting. Yeah, you're saying that. Yes. And uh, so I'm going to cook the seed now 
and we'll heat it up later. And all I'm gonna do is shove the whole lot in the microwave until it's cooked. Then scoop out the insides and mash it and then I'll just reheat it with a little bit of butter and black pepper when we're ready to start cooking. Why do why do we call Swede neeps? Well that's what I don't know, that's almost what I've known as in Scotland. Because you would think neeps was short for turnips, but it's not. Because this isn't unless is is this a well, type we, of turnip? We call that a tur that would be a turnip. Oh us. you would call this a turnip. If we weren't calling that a neat, we'd call it a turnip. Yeah. So what I what I like to call a Swede is what mum likes to call a neep. So that's what I'm about to put in the microwave. We have some broccoli as well, because the girls don't really like Swede. Neep. And I'm gonna do a whiskey cream and whiskey uh, mustard sauce as well. I'll do that now. My mother is here. My mother. No. We basically have the same haircut these days. Yes, it's a man's a bit paler than yours. You're a bit paler than yours. Yeah. But I was questioning why mum was bringing her Burns poetry, and it's because her one is like properly ancient. Yeah. Well, <laughs> not that ancient. I bought it as a teenager. It's probably ancient then. <laughs> In the days of black and white. Yeah. When the world was still in black and white. If you look at the cover page, you'll see where I bought it. Oh, does it say? Mm -hmm. I think we looked at this in a vlog, a New Year 2020, you know, I think we did. Mm, this where I bought it. Oh, look. Oh, at Burns Cottage. I wish I'd put it in the day. The but... day, yeah. It was in the 60s. So that's the book plate from where she bought it. In the 60s. I went on holiday there. Latest reprint, 1964 is when it was printed. Yes, it was and you're going to read Tam O'Shanter later, I aren't am. you? Yes, yeah. the mum's oh, opted for so Tam O'Shanter. This is falling to bits now. Oh yes, and this, hang on, let me move the yeah, camera you can, in. It's really, you can't really see there, it was a four-leaf clover, it's falling to bits. Why have you got a four-leaf clover in Because I found one and pressed it. It's, it's still there. <laughs> So it was a forty. It clover, was, yeah. But it remains. One needs to go for. An ancient four-leaf clover. Yeah. It was all going very well, and the haggis is nearly cooked. The pan was on for the broccoli, and everything is going swimmingly until I realised that I hadn't actually done the potatoes. The tatties. The tatties. So I had to quickly peel and chop them up, and they're on now. But it's now gone half past seven, and I've only just put the potatoes on. Oh dear. Never mind. Maybe I'll pour a whiskey. <laughs> Exhibition, don't you? Yes! I want to go and see that. We've got to go and see it. We're, we are Titanic bucks. Oh we are. <laughs> we'll have to go and we make sure. We have drained the ocean. Yeah. We have to make sure. Mm. And they, they, found they, they ruled out that it was prehistoric. So this is called. That Mum, you, you uh, say it because you'll say it right. It's a cache. A cache. A cache. It's a cache, which is like, um, it's for passing round whiskey, basically. <laughs> and my mum bought it for my dad for his 60th birthday in 2007, which is funny because he didn't drink whiskey. <laughs> no. <laughs> but he was Scottish. So, are you going to have some? So I can have some. I have put water in it. Mm. That's a nice one, that. <laughs> Oh my goodness, that's so nice. What's the whiskey? It's the Glimmerosa Space, Space Side, Side, one of your favourites. vegetarian haggis from Aldi's. It was really, really nice and there's not much of it left. No, we, we, we really motored through that veggie You one. can see the paper. It was very nice. Look and, at this half. <laughs> yeah, and it was nice and peppery. Mm. Yeah. It was, it was nice and spicy. Actually looking at um, it, we could have done just the vegetable. Mum, how did you get on with yours? Did you it was lovely, I enjoyed that. Yeah. Did you especially enjoy the lumpy split sauce? <laughs> I did. That yes, was, that was yes. it tastes, the main thing. It tastes absolutely meal. lovely. Who cares? I mean, haggis is lumpy, isn't it? <laughs> Lilia. Hello. 
What did you make of your haggis, neeps and tatties? Oh, I loved it. Yeah? Yeah. Do you like burns? Like? Yeah, I do. I've been talking about it all day. <laughs> Me too. Dan is sitting with the computer behind him and you can see the cast on tutorial that mum and I were watching, which is part of the reason why I forgot to cook the potato. <laughs> <laughs> um, how did you enjoy your haggis? I loved it as always. Um, really, really enjoyed it. This is my first burns night of just vegetarian haggis because it'll be Easter, it'll be my one year anniversary. So that was delicious, really enjoyed it. Despite the split sauce, which taste, looked awful, but tasted lovely. Um, I thought I'd explain it. I'm not going to read the whole poem, it's yeah. too long. But I'll read bits like of Uncle it. Mike. And it, it's all about a man called Tamashanta. And basically, he has a little bit too much to drink. And he's a little <laughs> bit too much fond of the drink. And he gets caught up one night drinking. And so the poem starts off, it was like market, market day in the town. Mm -hmm. So it starts off, so um, Chapman Billy's, they would be like market traders. So it's, when Chapman Billy's leave the street and Druthy neighbours, neighbours mate, Druthy means thirsty, as market days are wearing late and folk begin to take the gate. While we sit boozing at the nappy <laughs> we know it and happens. getting through and uncle happy, we think now of the long Scotch miles, the mosses, water Juice. slaps and styles that lie between us and our haim, where sits our sulky, sullen dame <laughs> gathering her brows like the gathering storm nursing her wrath <laughs> to keep it warm you understand that lot yes <laughs> yes i like women that. sitting at home waiting for him to come back oh. <laughs> making sure making sure she's ten nice and angry she's nursing her wrath i wondered why that sounded familiar <laughs> <laughs> and he has to go past uh, an old kirk <laughs> or church oh, uh, and he's with a graveyard and it's Alawa Kirk okay that's the name of it <laughs> and uh, <laughs> so anyway as he's passing he, see, he sees this sight in the in the graveyard and it's 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 basically it's, it's warlocks and witches oh. in a dance. <laughs> and the sort of dancing they're doing is nay cantillion brought fine by France, but horn and pipes, jigs, chaspes and reels put life and metal in their heels so they're dancing to the old Scottish music, aren't they? Ding, ding, and ding, 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 ding. there's that old <laughs> Nick, that's the devil, in shape of beast with Sat choosy tight like black Sable grim and large to give them music was his charge he screwed the pipes <laughs> and gave them skirl <laughs> to roof and rafters added daryl so the devil's playing the bagpipes <laughs> accompany all this uh, but there's one particular um ghosty or ghoulie or whatever it was um and she was called Nanny. Her cutty sark, or paisley horn, that means that her short dress she was wearing, made of paisley, rough paisley stuff, that while a lassie she had worn, in longitude so sorely scanty, <laughs> short, it was her best, and she was vaunty, she was proud of it. And how Tam stood like one bewitched and thought his very in enriched. She was absolutely fascinated by it. So first he cape her sign another. Tam tint his reason altogether. Tint means lost. He lost his mind altogether. <laughs> and roars out, well done, Catty Sark. And in an instant, all was dark. And scarcely had he Maggie rallied, that's his horse, when out the hellish legion sallied. So he shouted out, well done, Cutty Sark. And then everybody went quiet. And then he took off on his horse with them in hot pursuit. Oh, no. <laughs> 
So anyway, they give chase. I just... They chase them. And this Cutty Thorpe one, Nanny, she's the one in the front of the crowd racing to catch him. Now, what he was doing, he was heading for the bridge across the water because witches and warlocks can't cross. Once he gets past the middle of the bridge, the key stain of the bridge, he's safe. Okay. Basically, they can't cross. But li little wishy Maggie's metal and Spring brought off her master hail, but left behind her own grey tail. So Maggie leapt and got him over the bridge, but she lost her tail in the process to Nanny. The Carlin caught her by the rump and left poor Maggie scarce a stump. Now, who, what this tale of truth shall read, ill command and mother's son tack heed. When are to drink, you are inclined, or cutty sarks run in your mind. Think, you may buy the joys or dear. Remember, Tam O'Shanter's mare. <laughs> <laughs> about half past eight and it's Wednesday the day after Burns night and I'm in the work car park just checking the Covid test to make sure that it's definitely negative and it is so I'm going to report that when I get in got my mask at the ready and I'm going to go in and spend a day at work I'm feeling really hungry today which is surprising given that I had quite a lot of haggis and potatoes last night but I'm feeling really nibbly it's quite a grey day today, but I might go for a walk at lunchtime and try and see what I can find. I bet there's lots of things I can find to film and share with you because the grounds here are really, really beautiful and there's always something going on um, to look at. And I'm just feeling a little bit, I don't know, I felt really positive and up for all of January, but today I'm feeling a little bit not positive and up, just a bit meh. But I suppose you can't be positive and up all the time, can you? You need to, you don't need to, but you're going to get the lows. Maybe a cup of tea will help. I'm home from work, it's about half past six in the evening and I am just in the middle of running a bath and I'm going to go and block some knitted socks that I finished uh, over the weekend and try to have a nice warm bath and warm up. I don't feel like I've been able to get warm all day, I feel like I'm cold to my bones so I think a hot bath will sort that out. Might do a bit of editing, might watch something on YouTube, might read something in the bath, I'm not sure yet. Uh, what was I going to say? Yes, so there were two, I had a couple of 
quite a few people ask two questions on my last vlog which was released on the uh, 24th of January so it was the one before this one and one of the, th the one of the questions I got from a lot of people was did we enjoy the cake I made a gin and tonic cake yes it was absolutely lovely uh, the, you, the, the gin just gave it flavour obviously you, you cook the gin as part of the syrup and the alcohol um, you know evaporate so it's not not got any alcohol in it and you just get the flavor of the gin and I was using a flavored gin anyway so it did really add to the flavor it was kind of like a lime drizzle cake and it was so moist it was almost like a pudding cake oh it was lovely really lovely I took some into work and there wasn't a crumb left by the end of the day so yes I would highly recommend that recipe it's well worth a try even if you don't make it with gin and just do it with the lime it will be delicious uh, and the link to that recipe is underneath my last video and then I had quite a few people asking what I was putting on the bread when I was toasting it to make uh, a cheese toasty and I've completely forgot to say it's something my mum always did I have no idea why <laughs> probably because her mum always did um, and it is uh, so under the grill I toast one side of the bread flip it over and then before I put on the cheese I put a tablespoon of milk on the bread and then I put the cheese on, melt the cheese and make the sandwich. And that is because it keeps everything just nice and moist. And yes, I know that word, the M word. <laughs> uh, but it, it just makes it really, really nice. Try it, try it. You don't have to take my word for it, try it, see what you think. But I've always made our cheese toasties like that when we make them under the grill. And it just makes them extra lovely and comforting so that's what I was putting on the cheese toasties anyway that concludes this little vlog about our celebration of Burns night and just a couple of normal days in the life really and I will see you again next week I do try to release videos every uh, Monday oh and I just wanted to say thank you again for everyone for your lovely comments and messages and to everyone that's bought me a Kofi donation as well that was really kind of you over the over the past couple of months um, I've had some really lovely messages. Uh, Kofi doesn't make it very easy to reply to people, um, but I do try to go in there and do that as often as I can. But I do read every one of the messages and it's so kind of you, thank you. Um, from the bottom of my heart, thank you very, very much. It really does make a difference to continuing to make videos. Um, yeah, so thank you. And thank you to everyone just for watching, for pressing like, don't forget to do that because it really does help my videos get out there. And I hope you have a lovely week and I will see you again next time. Thank you for watching.